All right, so in the last couple of lectures, we were looking at how we can discover a market, and I showed you how to do that using AliExpress and Amazon and also Facebook. And now what we want to look at is what are the products that we're actually going to sell within those markets and how are we going to decide if it's really a product that will sell. So these bullet points coming up here on this slide are key to this business model. Make no mistake, all right? So I want to go through each one. It's going to give you a really good insight in what you need to do in terms of product selection to make sure what you're looking at will actually convert into profit for you. Now, the first key point is price, all right? We are talking here about buying something on AliExpress at $4 or less and selling it at 15 to 20. So a significant markup. Now, there's a, there's a, there's a really good point about the 15 to $20 here. It's because this is an impulse item. If you're gonna buy something for $1,000, you're going to spend time researching, you're going to talk to people, you're going to, you know, I'm just going to buy it just like that. But the sort of $20 mark around that area, people will buy stuff on impulse. I'm sure you've done the same thing. Some people maintain that $50 or $100 is maybe an impulse item. And sure, go ahead, see whether you can actually do that. I play around this kind of $20 mark. I feel for me that's kind of like a sweet spot. Now, you know, buy at four, sell at 20 is key. I've seen people trying to buy at four and then sell at six. And sure, it's kind of interesting because they've got a price point which is very competitive. So they get lots of sales, but there's so little room to create a decent profit, especially by the time you take away your advertising costs, etc. that you literally need to sell thousands and thousands of products to make a decent amount of profit. So all you're really doing is kind of processing orders, you know? It's not a great business model. It's more of what I call the busy fool rather than, you know, intelligently busying up, uh, building up a profitable market. So buy at four and sell at 20. The next thing is make sure your product's not too heavy. If it's heavy, you're going to have to pay extra shipping costs or more precisely, you're going to have to try and pass on the extra shipping costs to your customer who may well not be willing to pay that. So uh, just avoid heavy stuff. Also avoid stuff that's too fragile. It would seem pretty obvious that if you, you know, ship something that is, is fragile, it could break in transit. So when your customer gets it, you know, it's, it's, it's broken, you're gonna get more refunds, you're gonna get more returns, you're gonna get more customer complaints. So just avoid that, take away that hassle straight away. When it comes to actually picking the product on AliExpress, make sure that the images are high quality. You've got some decent images there. You'll see some that are like really not very good images or there's watermarks all over them. Ignore those. An image will sell the product. We'll look at how to add product descriptions very, very soon. But it's really the image. Think about it. When you're on a site, you don't, you know, you don't immediately look at the, the product description. You look at the image. You look to see what this thing looks like. That's the thing that engages you. Avoid all branded products. Okay, basically, as, as a quick aside here, I don't want you to get hung up on this at all, but on product on websites like AliExpress, there are sadly some counterfeited products. You know, jewelry's kind of a classic with writing whatever it is, some jewelry brand on there when it really isn't got anything to do with them whatsoever. So just avoid it. Take that out. Don't get any problems down the road. There are so much other stuff to sell, you no need to focus on it. So just avoid all branded products can't be found at Walmart. So what I'm trying to say there is, you know, and if you're not in the US, then basically Walmart is the big mega store in the US that sells absolutely everything. What I'm trying to say is look for an element of uniqueness. Look for something that people haven't seen before because that will spark their interest. You know, it's like, oh, wow, I haven't seen that before. That could be kind of cool. I'd like to get it. My friends don't have it. I don't have it, whatever it is. But don't just try to sell something that you can buy around the corner. Solves a problem or caters to a passion. I've talked about this in previous slides, so I don't want to go over it again, but basically you are trying to, you know, the products that you will sell the best either solve a problem or they cater to a passion. And the last thing is the detail of the supplier. The supplier needs to be a good supplier. That may seem obvious, but you know, basically what you need to do, and on AliExpress they make it very simple because you can see whether they've got good feedback from other people that have bought from them, whether they've got plenty of stock, and for me, importantly, do they provide ePacket? Now, ePacket is a shipping solution 
which can expedite the process. The problem is with a lot of these things, one of the disadvantages you like with shipping from these Chinese suppliers is often they'll take 30, 40 days to ship the product. Your buyers are not going to be happy about waiting a month, a month and a half to receive stuff online. We are so used to these days almost getting like next day delivery. Now, because we are shipping at a slightly cheaper price point, they will be more tolerant. But ePacket enables you to ship stuff in maybe 5, 10, 15 days, something they will be more happy to accept. All right, congratulations. We're going to move on to the next section now where we're actually going to finally start adding products to our website. I'll see you in a moment.